Uh, so, hello. First of all, like I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, speaking about Angular JS because it's a a fun technology uh, to work with, and I would like to share some some joy uh, uh, that that comes with this framework. For me, it was really uh, surprising and joyful experience. So I hope I will be um, able to to convey uh, some of it. So before we start, uh, sorry. What's up? What's up? Seems like the keyboard is not working. I will have fun. I'm really sorry. Okay. Don't know what was happening. So, uh, just a few words about me. So, my name is Pavel Kozlowski. You can see all the, all the contact details at the top. So if you feel like uh, dropping me a line or seeing my code at GitHub, feel free to do so. Uh, so if I would have to like put one tagline under my name or like one label, I, I would say I'm an open source enthusiast uh, because like in my whole IT career, I, I benefited a lot from the uh, from the open source community. Not only in the uh, in terms of great libraries that I was able to use, uh, but also in terms of uh, what I've learned. Uh, and not only about IT, but also about the human interactions. So now when I, I've got the chance to, to contribute to the open source community, I'm trying to give back what I've received because, uh, as I said, uh, I received enormous amount of things. So my journey with Angular really started about one year and a half when I was looking for the uh, JavaScript framework for myself. And I, I was evaluating the usual bunch, the, all the names like Ember.js, uh, Backbone, and, and all the big names. And then one day, bumped into uh, into AngularJS and uh, fall in love uh, with it and kind of never look back. And uh, <clears throat> in the process of learning AngularJS, I uh, I got involved in the uh, AngularJS community more and more. And one day, got a proposal to write a book uh, about it. I guess I was mentally unstable at the day, and uh, I said yes. So uh, here's you, you can say uh, the uh, the book about about, about Angular JS. Uh, but uh, in the uh, while writing the book, I also uh, got closer to the uh, Angular JS core team, and uh, from November last year, I'm trying to help out uh, with the project. I'm also active committer on the Angular UI, uh, which is a kind of companion suite uh, to uh, Angular JS. So before we see AngularJS and then kind of code examples, we, we just need to understand from which, from where it's coming. So basically, the, the, the basic promise of, of AngularJS is that while browser uh, is our development environment, it's really our platform, it's our virtual machine, it's our deployment platform, uh, it's not the easiest uh, place to be in for us as the web developers. And, uh, we are, over the last 10 or 15 years, we, the, the type of applications that we are writing, I mean, th those evolve enormously. Like, I mean, you, you can see on the left-hand side, like a screenshot from 1996. Uh, this was apparently like very popular uh, traveler magazine. And at the time, the, the web was really the bunch of uh, hyperlinked uh, static resources. And then, like fast forward 2013, and this is the you know Google Google spreadsheet. So like the, the type of applications they've got nothing in common. Yet the browser is uh, is the same. Of course, I mean browsers got better, and uh, we've got new APIs. We've got uh, the the browsers are faster, faster. But uh, the, the the kind of underlying paradigms are, are the same. That we haven't had a kind of any tectonic shift uh, that would make a browser a better place for us, the web developers. The other funny thing um, with this history that we. We started with uh, HTML that is really, really expressive. I mean, it's a declarative way of, of saying what we, what results we want to achieve. And it's very concise and very expressive, right? I mean, no one, want, no one have any problems understanding what should happen with this hello world, right? I mean, we, we are just marking up the, uh, uh, the a piece of HTML and we let the browser to figure out uh, how things should be rendered. We are giving a bit of control to a browser. And in the process of like creating those dynamic Dynamic web applications, we kind of got a step back. We we, we kind of sorry. Um, 
we started to kind of do lower level manipulation, like do things step by step, like, you know, really say precisely uh, which steps should occur so our application runs. So while we can create like tremendously like amazing applications and we, we really create like super projects, it often feels like we need to have like amazing superpowers and uh, you know summon all the uh, all the all the our knowledge to to create those projects. So this is where Angular JS is coming, and uh, I guess I, I got like two messages today to to send about Angular JS. That first of all that it is um, it's trying to rethink a browser. It tries to make a browser a better place for us as the developers. And uh, and by doing so, it is it is quite different to uh, to probably other JavaScript uh, frameworks or libraries, and uh, in in a way, it's disturbing. So I, I particularly like the quote from Igor Minar when uh, at the beginning of Angular JS, uh, there were a lot of discussions like saying, okay, is it like the MVC framework, MVVM framework, or some what patterns does it follow? And then Igor posted on 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 Google Plus. Uh, <clears throat> a little artic article saying like, okay, it's model view, whatever, just try it out and uh, see how it feels for you. So let's get the feeling of, of AngularJS. So I, I think that the, the, the something that people are noticing uh, as the first thing about AngularJS is its so-called uh, two-way data binding. So as you can see, as I type, Things are appearing on the screen uh, immediately, and and what you see below, the, this this code here, <coughs> is the actual application. Well, this mini hello world application. This is the whole code that is needed to uh, to make this page live. And uh, and and there are probably two interesting things to notice uh, about this code. First of all, that uh, AngularJS kind of extends HTML vocabulary with those special, uh, let's say, non-standard um, HTML attributes. And uh, we call those attributes uh, in AngularJS uh, directives. So what AngularJS is trying to do here is just really get back to this declarative nature of HTML and take the, uh, uh, take the power of it. And the other thing that is, uh, really important about AngularJS that it is not like template, like string-based templating engine because in, in like regular string-based templating engines you, you would just take your, uh, take your model, your data, you would combine it with the, with the text template, like kind of, you know, mix it all together, uh, take the result and dump it uh, into, uh, into DOM. What AngularJS does, it actually works of the uh, of the uh, live DOM. It really uh, interprets DOM uh, in, in a browser. So what happens here is that uh, we've got this ng model directive and it says that every time something interesting happens in a browser, there's uh, some kind of event uh, that changes a model or, like, or changes, uh, changes the state in a browser, uh, the, the, the value of this input should go to the, uh, to the name part of the model. And as soon as it's done, we are ready to, to print it out. But this happens, th this, once again, this is the whole code. There's no, like, additional JavaScript involved here. This is, this is really the, the, the whole mini application. And, uh, what, what, what is happening here that this, this happens all the time. This, this happens in the loop, right? I mean, every time, every time there is a interesting event in a browser, the model will get bound and also like AngularJS will, uh, figure out which parts of the DOM needs to be updated, uh, as the result. And this removes enormous amount of boilerplate code. I mean, this, this, we don't have to think about like, okay, here I need to bind an event to the input field, and every time there is a change, I need to update some other part of the DOM. This really happens automatically. So <clears throat> we will switch to the, a bit of live coding, just to see more, uh, a little bit more about AngularJS. 
Okay. So I don't know if you can see the code, like right, or is it visible, or should it be bigger, or it's okay? Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> so basically, we'll try to do like a, a little Twitter-like uh, box because, like, th this is this is typical um, like scenario that we do for the uh, for the small application, right? I mean, we've got like mini form. Uh, we've got a list, uh, we are editing some data, and there are a lot of moving parts, right? I mean, th this is the number of like characters left. Here, where's the cursor? So this is the number of characters left. We've got those buttons that should be uh, that should be changing their state depending on the, what is typed in uh, in input box. We've got the, the list that should get updated. So we'll see how it how it feels uh, with AngularJS. So first of all, like the here is the the static. Uh, Static page. There's nothing happening here. We will turn it into dynamic one. Uh, so first of all, we need to include AngularJS. It's the really the whole library is um, one file. You don't need any third-party dependencies uh, to make it work. I think the uh, unminified version of AngularJS currently, like, sorry, minified version is around like 80 kilobytes. When you zip it, it's around 30 kilobytes. So it is not uh, uh, huge. Uh, then to kind of bootstrap the whole uh, application, we need to uh, add so-called ng-app directive, which is saying this is the part of the DOM that uh, AngularJS should manage. So the, the I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there is when I type, you, you can see auto completion for those. Uh, for those special attributes, and I want to show you because the, the community around AngularJS is really amazing, and there are so many extensions, so many different uh, tools. So this is like a WebStorm extension. So anyway, before so this ng-app thing is the only thing that is needed to turn uh, this part of the DOM into the live DOM. So we'll first like make this form live. So we already saw uh, ng, ng model directive, and as I said, it's tweet. It basically says every time something happens uh, in this input field, bind me, get me the, the get me the value of this uh, in the text box, and and put me into into this tweet dot text uh, value, and we can see that it already tweet should be live already, right? I mean, you can see uh, that is already working. And uh, once again, there's there's nothing, I, I, I haven't had to like write anything like, okay, refresh me things. Uh, so, for example, making this number of remaining characters live becomes super easy. Thanks. Length, because you can use in this interpolation. I mean, those kind of curly braces. This is the same syntax as used in handlebars, for example. But inside this, we can use uh, so-called uh, AngularJS expressions, which are really close to uh, the JavaScript expressions. But we can really evaluate uh, things on the fly. And once again, as I type, uh, things are uh, things are changing on the fly. Um, and th this usually, when when there is one event, we are modifying a um, we are modifying a model, and then based on those modifications, there are many things that should happen. And what Angular does, I mean, or like how it works, what, what is the kind of centric to its philosophy is that it works off the model. Like the, the model is the single source of truth. So so what we do in Angular is we, we just we, we modify the model and we let the uh, and we let the other parts of the DOM to react based on the model. And this approach it makes it super easy to synchronize uh, several uh, moving parts. For example, let's say there is no point to uh, to have this clear box uh, enabled when uh, when there is nothing uh, typed in the in the in, in the input box, right? Sorry, 
What did I scrap? I don't know. I I know what. Anyway, sorry. I will skip this one. I don't know if I refreshed. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I didn't scrub anything. I'm just not thinking straight. Uh, so once again, we've got this this one model thing, and then we we can drive uh, many uh, many uh, parts of the screens based on, on this model. Once again, without any uh, uh, manual refreshes. So the other part. Let, let's let's not make this uh, list live. And uh, I will show you something in a sec. So basically, the uh, the model in in Angular JS is it, it's it's composed of uh, straight JavaScript objects. We don't have to do anything special. We don't have to uh, create uh, objects that should act as the model in any special way. Those are really can be regular JavaScript objects and regular JavaScript arrays. So if we want to add this tweets, for example, we can do ng use another directive called ng click and call add. And what this add is doing, this is the kind of code behind uh, this uh, add button. What 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 we are doing? We are just basically pushing a new item to the to an array. So there is. There's no special wrapping of those objects into model. There's nothing like, for example, people coming from the background background are often like asking where where are model where are my models like where is my background model. There's nothing special about the uh, Angular JS models. Those are regular JavaScript objects. So we can see probably. Yeah, that when we <clears throat> uh, that it's enough to like you know add those items to the array and and they are uh, they are available uh, to drive the other parts of the model uh, and displaying a list is also very easy. So let's turn this list into something live. And for this, we can use another directive called ng repeat. So you can do say tweet in tweets. And then uh, Angular JS will kind of create new DOM elements as we adding items to the uh, to the to the list. Sorry, here we should be displaying the actual value. Text. Right. So it all, all works. So the, the this approach of like uh, focusing on the model manipulations, like I'm using straight JavaScript objects to create a model, and then driving the whole UI, driving the whole HTML rendering of the model, uh, results in very very concise, um, very very concise code and the very readable code. So. This is the whole, let's say, JavaScript code for this for this little box. I mean, I, I didn't demonstrate everything, like clearing the box or removing uh, items. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, th this is like this di this type of things we are doing like all the time. We are creating forms, we are validating them, we are adding the list, we are removing items from the list, and so on and so forth. And uh, you, you can see that this is really, really very concise and very um, very readable code. There's no like magic going on here, but uh, th this like kind of giving control to uh, to Angular JS to to actually do do rendering has some other advantages because all of the sudden we can very easily animate let me tweet animate we can instruct uh, AngularJS to do some additional things while rendering uh, those items in the list. And you can say, let's say, animate things. 
and you can see that now those uh, items are like showing with the a bit of uh, a bit of delay. So once again, we, we are kind of saying that uh, HTML is great. It's very declarative. It's very uh, it's very expressive, mm, and we focus on the DOM uh, on on the model manipulation. We we just work with the regular JavaScript objects, and we sprinkle the DOM with those additional directives to instruct AngularJS to do rendering uh, for us. So uh, we are giving a bit of control uh, to AngularJS, but as the result, we are getting this very concise code and the adding animation that is. Uh, uh, Attic animations and many other things that that becomes very easy. So let's switch back to the uh, to the presentation. So so th this type of things, this kind of two-way data binding, and this model that is uh, straight and JavaScript uh, code. It's, those are the first things that people are seeing in AngularJS, and this is the first kind of wow effect. And, and I mean, when I saw it, it's like, okay, it feels a bit like magic. It really removes so much burden uh, from me. But there is more. So we saw on this demo that we, we were adding um, new uh, attributes to the uh, to the HTML language, but. Uh, so those were like kind of built-in directives. Those are coming with, with AngularJS. But actually, AngularJS exposes the same API to us as developers and allows us to create uh, the uh, special uh, special new elements and special new attributes. And OK, I mean, there are many uses for this, right? I mean, we, we can create uh, a clock that is actually running here in the corner. Uh, or we can bring back uh, things that were removed for the good reason. So I, I guess this is not the good use case. Don't do this at home. Uh, but uh, actually, there are uh, there are really uh, very um, practical uh, uses uh, for this. And uh, first of all, by by creating those directives, you really can uh, create your own custom tags and create your own your own language on top of HTML. Right, so HTML5 added a lot of type of new tags and. Uh, we are happy to have uh, new markup elements to, to better structure our documents. But with AngularJS, we can create our own elements today. And one of the use cases is that, once again, we can take a snippet of HTML and create our own uh, alias for this. And uh, th this is like alert from, from Twitter's bootstrap. And uh, honestly, I, I never remember all those, you know, little classes, I need to look it up. OK, for alert, I could probably learn this one. But uh, for, for, for bigger widgets, uh, it's not that easy. So, so you can create something that, that kind of makes sense for you, that, that the language that you can speak. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the previous example was the uh, kind of static directive, where we're just basically saying, OK, take me this piece of HTML and replace it with other piece of HTML. And it was like you know, defining my own language. But actually, you are not limited to, to static. Uh, static directives. Uh, you can encapsulate also behavior uh, inside those directives, and uh, and and has, this really has like many advantages. So first of all, like I'm, I'm really encapsulating a piece of HTML plus associated behavior as the one uh, pagination directive, but it also uh, by by just doing this by encapsulating this into a directive. I really removing the HTML code application, and uh, it's it's really not fun to to repeat it the, this kind of pagination code over and over again if I have to do many paginators in my web application. But as soon as I've got like this really concise uh, concise sy syntax, I know that I'm I'm not duplicating HTML code. The other advantage is that you can uh, kind of abstract away. Uh, a mar the certain markup and certain uh, set of CSS classes used uh, uh, in your web application. So, like Bootstrap is great, and we all love it. And but you know, like all websites are uh, starting to look the same. So, if one day someone is coming and telling you, okay, your application is great, but you know, now I would like to have a foundation version. So, if you if you kind of duplicated this code over and over again, you would have a hard time turning it uh, into. Uh, into another uh, markup or CSS framework. 
And by having this encapsulated, you, you can simply reuse things. Uh, so yet another uh, example, like uh, we can go with those directives as far as we as we want. We can create bigger and bigger widgets, uh, or even you can create like bigger parts of the application that make sense for you, like a, for example, login form or something. So th this is really uh, lets you work on the higher level, like to create your own vocabulary and saying like, okay, this is th this is things that I know that, that there are things that I'm using in my application, uh, and uh, and work with this. And it also like helps enforce consistency. I mean, I know that all my accordions are going to look the same. Even I mean, I'm, I'm removing the risk of um, typos in the in the HTML code. But uh, so so <clears throat> those were the let's say the most visible or the most sexy parts of uh, of AngularJS, the two data binding and the ability to create your own directives. But just don't get mistaken, like the AngularJS is not only a templating framework or only kind of display framework. It's a really complete uh, set of uh, tools and utilities uh, that you can use to create uh, your web applications. So. You, you will find all the all the utilities that are normally needed, like the for doing XHR requests, like uh, working with cookies and so on and so forth. So so it's really in this like 80 kilobytes that we are including uh, in our page, we got really everything that that you need to write the web application. But there is also something special in AngularJS that probably I've, I've never seen in an, any other uh, JavaScript framework is the dependency injection and uh, this was actually something that uh, attracted me to AngularJS uh, a lot, because dependency injection is not only fancy, uh, fancy word, but it enables two things. First of all, it's really kind of the st testability enable, and the AngularJS team is really, really serious about the uh, testability. So it's not only that the framework that is well tested, and you can check the uh, the test coverage of AngularJS itself, but uh, AngularJS guys said like, okay, we not only want to release the framework that is like the uh, created on the solid basis that is well tested, but we also want to make sure that the applications that you are writing are really testable. So here we can see the example of the controller that gets injected with uh, services for making XHR calls or the login service. And once again, this is great for uh, the stability because I can uh, under the test, I can replace this uh, the real HTTP that really talks to over the network to 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 a mock. But it also great because it means that <coughs> I can substitute those services uh, in my application not only during testing but also during the runtime. If for some reason I don't like the logging service that comes with AngularJS that by default uh, writes to the console, and for example I want to send the errors to the I don't know uh, over the network to my server. I can do so. I, I can really substitute those services uh, during the test and also inside my application. So as the summaries, so like really AngularJS tries to make a browser a better place for us as the developers. And it does so by uh, providing this two-way data binding with the automatic refresh. And it really, really removes a lot of code that you would have to write manually otherwise. I mean, th this is like pretty amazing to, to see how concise AngularJS application are. And people are like constantly reporting uh, five times. Like the, there are so many stories, people are like, okay, I had my application in my favorite framework. I rewrite it in AngularJS and I, I cut like, you know, I got like really, really smaller code base. Then you've got this uh, <coughs> ability to create uh, custom uh, HTML elements uh, or attributes, which really allows you to create your own language and really kind of speak with the uh, in your in your own terms, like kind of defining the higher level vocabulary. But it it's not all. It's really this is the complete framework uh, that is uh, created on the solid basis. At the same time. It's kind of new and, and disruptive. And uh, I don't know if you can see this. 
It is the um, diagram created by uh, someone from the ben, ben Nadel from the AngularJS community. And I think it really nicely uh, illustrates how different AngularJS is and how like learning process comes. It, it really goes this kind of, you know, roller coaster, uh, I think. And you, you, you get this, this first uh, excitement, like in, when you see the two-way data binding and see like, okay, this works, this is just great. And then you're trying to do, you're probably hitting some problems with the scopes and they ask like, oh my God, I mean, it's so hard. And, and this, is, this goes like, really goes like this, but believe me, it just only gets better with time. And above all, it, this really joyful piece of technology, like, I mean, so many times uh, I was like writing something and I was like, oh my God, it, it's so nice. It really feels so nice. <laughs> So different bits and pieces. So like once again, I mean, I since AngularJS is rather different to to, to other frameworks, I, I would encourage you to give it a try and like kind of form your own opinion because uh, as we even could hear uh, yesterday on the Lightning talks, people kind of try like tend to develop this kind of love and hate relationship with it. So just try it yourself uh, uh, and 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 see how it works for you. Uh, so there are. Different, uh, there are a lot of like learning resources and then the starting with the, uh, AngularJS, uh, website and the, uh, and the GitHub, uh, account. The examples of the directives I was, uh, showing up from the Angular UI, uh, Bootstrap project. And then there are different, uh, learning, uh, materials. There are really a lot of good, uh, quality, uh, tutorials, blogs, videos, and so on. And just the breaking news from this night, or I think like three hours ago, the new versions uh, were released. So uh, you can uh, try them out today. Mm, th there are like at the moment there are two kind of branches. One so called one zero x, which is uh, label test stable, and the the other one 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 x that is uh, let's say unstable, but <laughs> it is really let's say stable. I mean, th there is really, uh, there is a very comprehensive set of unit tests on, on, on AngularJS uh, projects. So even the unstable branch is really, uh, really stable. So this is not something like it breaks all the time. I think this is all what I prepared. So if you've got questions, I would be happy to answer them. Remember, there is a phone. <laughs> so uh, you can place logic in the DOM. You have your uh, curly braces where you can put JavaScript-like expressions. And then you have your ng uh, attributes on the DOM element. Yes. So you can put a lot of logic and control the two-way data binding and stuff in your DOM. But then you have your controllers. So I imagine the controllers are for, you know, when your application grows to a certain size, which mm. all real applications do. So I imagine you have to kind of keep your tongue straight where you keep all your logic. Otherwise, I mean, is, does Angular dictate sort of where your logic lies or is it up to you to make the right decisions on where you put your okay. things? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so this is a really good, good question. So, so, those, I guess you, you are referring to logic to those expressions, right? I mean, uh, the, uh, that I can do some calculations here. And, uh, so, so first of all, like the, uh, AngularJS is discouraging, like putting a lot of logic in, in, in the templates for the simple reason of the stability. I mean, there's no way to like put this under, I mean, there are ways actually of put it on test, but like it's so much easier to put a controller under unit test, uh, because this is just straight, uh, straight JavaScript. So, so like if I move the logic here, it's so much easier to test. The second thing is that like, even if you would like to, uh, there is no way that you can put, uh, too much logic into it because, uh, well, uh, I, I guess this would become really difficult to, uh, to write and understand here. So yeah, I mean, normally I would say I would probably, if not, if not for the talk, I would probably move this to a function and call it like remaining characters or something. So, but, but really the main driver is here is the stability and, and readability of the, of the templates. Yeah. 
Uh, hi. Um, about the uh, custom markup. Yeah. How does it affect um, accessibility tools like screen readers or uh, search engine optimization? I don't know how it affects screen readers. Uh, and for search engines, well, I, I guess this is the, for search engines, I guess, like in the end, you've got this markup that you put in the, uh, in the DOM. But when the AngularJS runs, it, it transforms it into the, uh, the regular DOM. So the runtime DOM is, is really the, the standard one. So I guess this, just like from the external point of view, you don't see much difference. So, so this is how you write things, but like the live DOM is really composed of the standard elements. So I have a question again. Uh, so with the ng attributes, uh, it's actually two questions. Um, would you see <laughs> you going in the direction of, of having HTML5 data attributes instead to, to have them? Okay, so, so you, you, you can, so like, uh, I guess this is the first. So like the, yeah, there are some people that are like worried about the uh, uh, validation of those uh, attributes that they are like say producing invalid uh, HTML5. Uh, so actually you can prefix them with data. Uh, so we can do something like data. So this way you can make him, let's like, say, look like, like make them valid in, in terms of parsers uh, or validators. And, and it works the same way. Like yeah, you don't it, it works like the, the, for the runtime of AngularJS, there is absolutely no difference. Right, okay. And, and the second question is more philosophical. Uh, <laughs> does it matter if it validates? Like, what's your opinion? Okay, <laughs> my personal opinion, I don't care that much. I mean, the, I, I know that, well, once again, for me, all those tools, like the tools, the unit testing and so on, it, it needs to, to bring something to your project, right? It, it needs to mean that you are moving faster with the project, or you are like making less bugs, or you, it's easier to maintain. Now, the, the question is how uh, the HTML5 validation brings me to this, to this goal. And honestly, I was living so far without it. Then, I mean, I, I'm, it, it is possible to do with AngularJS, like, you, you know, you, you are free to go your own way, but uh, personally, I, I'm, I'm not like too crazy about